And here we go. Hello everybody, I hope you are doing greatly and you are coping at the best with this time of pandemic, this time of, this time of locking, being locked down and, and whatever you are in your apartment, your house, your villa, your little room, wherever you are, I hope you are safe and you find a way to cope with intelligence with, with the, in a way that is smart, in a way that is sustainable with this huge challenge that we are all called to right so today we're gonna discuss we have so much to discuss because what's going on out there with the pandemic with the restriction with the social restriction among humans is creating a lot of considerations and a lot of consequences among other animals other than human animals and in particular we're gonna talk about wildlife we will talk about different aspects of how wildlife is being affected by the pandemic but first and foremost please please support this channel so first like this channel there is a thumbs down here so the thumbs up so put a thumbs up like this video and subscribe to the channel subscribe to the channel there is a little thing this says subscribe so click that and then a little bell appears so click on the bell so you will be notified when a new video comes on the channel this doesn't cost you anything and will support this channel very much i would really appreciate if you can give that type of support it doesn't take anything it takes just two split seconds and it's done and uh, you know all what is offered on this channel is free it takes time to produce materials and contents that are also valuable i hope so please support like the video subscribe and hit the bell and if you want to make an unplane and you want really support further comment also at the end of this video watch this video until the end because there is so much to discuss so much okay first and foremost we were saying we were talk about we are going to talk about wildlife how wildlife is being affected by this pandemic going on there are four points we are going to talk about in regard to wildlife and the pandemic um, here the list first wildlife trade so the markets that are related to wildlife second wildlife taking space out of the forest out of their usual area of living and populating again the urban, urban areas right that are those areas where humans live right third wildlife in zoos in parks in uh, in uh, biological parks in uh, conservation parks in uh, conservation areas and um, other areas where wildlife is under the custody under the supervision of humans and uh, fourth we're going to talk about wildlife and other animals that live free range and we will see also how those animals are being affected by the pandemic directly or indirectly so let's dive into this point number one wildlife trade we all know that this pandemic created a lot of discussions about around the wildlife trade which is a theme a topic that is already so largely extensively debated because most of us do not like the wildlife trade right we don't like for other animals to be killed for for a corn like a, 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 rhin, a rhinos or a, an elephant or or for a, for the nails of uh, of a tiger uh, or maybe the um, pieces of the part of that fish that may be used for for making a type of soup and so on right we do not like for wildlife to be traded and 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 we would like to reduce at least where to not completing i mean we would like to reduce that or completely eliminate the trade of certain animals especially where those animals are under threat from a conservation point of view from they are in in, a, in the risk of extinction right so um, and we know that with the pandemic this topic has become even more uh, uh, crucial because um, the pandemic raised a lot of attention because initially was thought 
um, and there is still a lot of ambiguity ambiguity around that but initially was the, that the the coronavirus was coming from a bat that was sold uh, on um, on a street market uh, and, and animals uh, market in in, um, in Wuhan and then this bat was maybe eaten part of this bat was eaten by somebody and then that somebody was the patient number one where the 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 coronavirus that type of coronavirus the COVID-19 which is a, a virus typical uh, from uh, uh, affecting bats shifted from that species from the bat to the human species and then once it shifted it can be transferred by uh, from human to human much more easily right so there are a lot of debates around that there were a lot of debates around that and and then that has raised even more attention and and questions so um, there are other animals also that they have uh, may have other virus that can be transferred and transmitted let's say to to humans and markets uh, wildlife trade markets are particularly exposed so a lot of people working in the markets markets in those markets or um, or uh, uh, buying things in those markets are usually exposed to that and then those people travel meet their family meet their other people their colleagues and so easily viruses the risk for a virus to be transferred easily and 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 and, and disproportionately elsewhere is huge right and we have seen if if that's the case for coronavirus that has been transmitted from a bat to a human we have seen what does that mean what that can mean right and so because of that there are many people and many organizations that are claiming and leveraging the fact that we have this coronavirus to, to raise attention on conservation issues, on the protection of animals, and to make a strong statement, a strong point that you see what we have to pay, the price that we have to pay to have those, those uh, markets and, and trading wildlife and killing other animals just to sell a part of it for a soup, for, for medicine, whatever the reason may be, and, or for, uh, for business, right? Or for, for making a lot of money. So maybe this coronavirus is telling us that we should stop, we should close, we should ban all of those markets and we should not again trade wildlife for the reason we were doing before right this would be a good point i mean it is a good point if we can at least contain the the, the that type of market let's say probably is not gonna be in a snap that we are gonna eliminate all the wildlife trade markets especially in those cultures and areas where those markets are really established but it would be a good point to leverage the fact that coronavirus has, has spread and is is and is, is being uh, is affecting the global population to think critically about uh, wildlife and the fact that um, we should not take the life of other animals, especially we should not take the life of other animals and put them. On, on, on a trade market and, and sell different parts of animals. Um, first and foremost, ethically, we should not do that. But in addition to that, there is also a, a collective health issue, a collective health risk. So we should know that, and not because other animals are bad, bad creatures. It's just because every species has particular every species have particular viruses that are part of the of the life of those uh, of that species and the problem comes when a virus is tr is transmitted from a species to another then another species that another species get affected and that may be uh, very uh, very 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 hard very 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 bad for another species Species, as we are observing now with the coronavirus COVID-19 shifting uh, being transmitted from a bat to humans.
provided that that's the true story, provided that that's the final story that they're gonna give to us, right? Because there are already, there are still some debates uh, on how the COVID-19 has been transmitted to human, has been transmitted from another animal, has been transmitted because it was an experiment in a lab and then maybe they lose control over this uh, uh, virus and, and then it came out and affected some people and then got spread or whatever other version. But the most accredited, uh, the most accredited version is that the virus shifted from another animal, maybe the bat, to human. So, to sum up on this point, we probably need to leverage the fact that we are paying this price, we are all locked down and probably that because of the coronavirus which is maybe coming from bats and we and and is the right moment to think to rethink to the fact that we cannot use other animals for trading reasons, for market, for 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 um, maybe we need to revisit some medicines that we we use we need to find other components and uh, certainly we cannot bother in in, in 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 the way we do especially wildlife especially those wildlife species that are under threat this is point number one point number two okay um what was point one number two okay wildlife in urban areas right so as we are more and more restricted and we are going out less and less, wildlife are coming closer and closer to our urban areas. In some areas where, where people barely go out uh, and there, there are parks, there are um, woods around, wildlife is coming out of the woods and say, oh, okay, this place is quiet, you know, and these places until yesterday there were all of those cars and motorbikes and tracks going in and out. Now it's quite quiet. So what they do naturally, they stretch their area of exploration, let's say, so they go to, to the end of a wood, to the end of a park, to the end of a forest, and they try to check, okay, it's quite enough, I can go out. So they are coming out and in some cases they are coming out very uh, preposterously you know because for example there are areas let's see here um, there is an area where for example uh, all groups of monkeys uh, came out from from a forest and uh, basically colonized an area um, Oh, you can see here, for example, here. Oh, yeah, here's the video. It was published on the Guardian. Let's check. A, let's watch a, a moment of this video. You see all of those monkeys. Let's watch. You see, they came out in the city, out of control. This may be somewhere around India or Pak or Bangladesh. Let me see if it's. Um, And you see, yeah, and this is the complete chaos. All of those monkeys are fighting around those few resources of food, probably finding around. And uh, but yeah, you have other examples still in this article that is uh, from uh, the World Economic Forum, and uh, this article uh, goes through uh, several aspects of wildlife. Uh, how is wildlife affected? But for example, you see, this must be somewhere around the UK. I guess in Wales, yeah. So those are goats and uh, and other farm animals that are l uh, maybe free roaming in a f in, in uh, on the hill, and now they are sh pushing their areas away. F I mean, they are moving away from the areas, and they are coming again to the cities, right? And um, to s to some degree, to some degree, I think this is uh, quite quite uh, uh, predictable was quite predictable and it's somehow fair let's say because in many cases in many cases mm, uh, those animals may tend to conquer back some areas that were belonging to them but then we have colonized those area we know that there is this issue or oh, if you don't let's let's mind that 
we as human beings, as a species, we tend to colonize the space and the areas of other animals. We expand ourselves, we expand our territories, we expand our cities. And so we take the space away from other species that need to, that are pushed back and they need to move further and further from where we live. And so we sometimes we restrict many species in just a little piece of a, a little area while we expand further and further, right? We are colonizers somehow on, in, our, in our general behavior towards other animals, towards the planet Earth. We tend to, 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 to conquer the space and believe that that space belongs to us, right? While well, in fact it's not that way. And this is an, um, the side effect, let's say, of this uh, pandemic and the fact that we are locked down. It's showing us that other animals are there. And if we give space to them, they come again into our space and they, they, they want to explore more, but we have not allowed them uh, for, for, let's say now, since the, the Industrial Revolution started, right? So, let's say, according to the areas, according to where in the globe we're gonna watch, 300, 200, 100 years, but uh, we are taking more and more space. But wildlife is coming again, is, <laughs> in some cases is entering again in our space, in our urban space, and this is something that needs to make us thinking, you know? What what have, what we have been taking away from wildlife and and maybe to some extent to some degree we should allow we, again some animals to come into our space and find a way to coexist with those animals with other species with some species coming from wildlife right okay third point is uh, zoos and um, other places where animals are living. Uh, here we watch, uh, we, we see, we witness, um, um, a, let's say, a very negative side effect in the sense that many animals are, are lacking the care that they usually were given when old people were working normally. And anyway, in many cases, the, also, uh, under the normal condition we were living before the pandemic, um, in many cases there were already some lack of lacks of care in some um, zoological gardens, zoological park, uh, zoo parks, and so on. Right, but. Um, in this particular case, this is becoming even more uh, evident, right? Because people cannot go to work, the, the, the staff is limited, the, there are less people at work, there is less food provision, there is, um, I mean, all the, all, all, many things are not working properly, right? Not working normally, right? So animals under those, in those areas are suffering a lot and, um, and this is bad, this is bad because already we, uh, what can I say, I mean already we force those animals to stay in those places where we can go to visit and, and, and watch a lion, watch a monkey, watch a group of uh, bonobos, watch a, a group of uh, um, lizards, huge lizards, or a panther, or a cobra, or something like that. So those animals are already forced not to leave, forced not to leave under the natural circumstances they should live, which is free in the wild, right? In addition to that, they already suffer in some cases of a lack of care. Under those conditions that we are all crossing, this become even gets exacerbated, that gets even more, uh, more complicated, and so some animals are, are paying also an important price due to this coronavirus because less people around, less care, less food, and less attention in general, and uh, less money because there are no people paying the ticket to go visit uh, those animals, right? So less economies around those, uh, those animals. And so all that industry and in, as a consequence, the animals is affected. The industry is affected. As a consequence, the animals are affected. And um, fourth point is those animal free ranging animals that may be, for example, the case of free ranging dogs, right? Fringing dogs 
in India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Mexico, South America, other areas of South America, East Europe, Southern Italy. Uh, Free Engine Dogs is, uh, um, is one of the most um, present species, uh, subspecies, let's say, uh, distributed everywhere or around the world. Who knows me knows that this is uh, um, one of my uh, main uh, topic of attention and research. Uh, so, uh, free ranging dogs rely a lot on the leftover of humans. Not that that's uh, something uh, good in general. We we know that in some areas maybe that's not not um, um, we would like to change also something and we would like to provide a different type of lifestyle to certain dogs but in certain areas that lifestyle of dogs is just established since um, since ever in that way right so f people around throw things around throw the garbage and the garbage areas are the places where those dogs may go to feed sometime right so because there are less people around because activities are closed and restaurants are closed and and and, and everything is consumed more at home uh, those animals have a way less access to those resources than they had before right and i did a video uh, in particular on those on that topic uh, and was targeting Bali dogs, dogs of Bali, and so the video was made for people f living in Bali in support of dogs to tell people first and foremost don't worry because dogs do not carry coronavirus but secondly and importantly uh, keep in mind that those dogs now out there can access less food uh, because less people around, less ceremonies, less uh, activities, less restaurant open, so those dogs cannot access food, right? So keep in mind uh, that those dogs may need some help and so try to see if you can provide some food for them, right? You can check this video, you can, you can find uh, a video in a link down below and uh, actually is also in Indonesian language, so if you are curious to see to see me how I talk in Indonesia, which is not perfect, of course, it's not my first language, but I, I speak some because I've been living for many years in Indonesia, studying for ranging dogs of Bali. Um, so you will find the video down below or uh, at the end of this, uh, of this video. So uh, this is another aspect that we need to consider on how the fact that coronavirus and the pandemic is expanding so rapidly and everywhere in the world how certain animals are also are also being affected by the fact that people are affected so as a consequence right as a consequence of our lifestyle changing as a consequence of our economies changing as a consequence of our uh, human being pretty much everywhere around the globe being to different degree locked down right in the case of Italy, Spain and other countries the lockdown is full, it's complete, in other cases it's more loose, uh, in other cases uh, is, uh, there are some indications, but one way or the other that this uh, pandemic is affecting globally all, 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 all around the world and so one way or the other in one of those four uh, uh, one or more than one of those four aspects that we have been investigating in this video also animals wildlife is being affected by the spread of the coronavirus so keep those aspects in mind i hope this can uh, foster some considerations let me know in a comment please let me know what do you think if you have other observations if you think for example that there are other ways how animals especially wildlife is being affected by the spread of the coronavirus let me know in a comment write me your opinions and please remember those contents are after you to you for for free is my pleasure to offer my contribution to animals to the cause of an, cause, to the cause of animals to the in support for animals in support for people in understanding some aspects relating to human and animal interaction so remember that and please like this like this video subscribe subscribe to the channel somewhere around here there is a, 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 a thing that says subscribe and then 
hit the bell. There is a little bell. Hit that bell so you will be notified when a new video comes. And remember to comment, right? This will be very appreciated and will help this channel to grow a little bit. So the more this channel can grow, the more I can feel motivated in producing more valuable, I hope, contents. Thank you very much for your attention. It's a pleasure to have your attention here. I hope you will you will you will think further about what we've been discussing here and i hope to see you soon again on this channel i see you soon bye